Hey everybody, Jeremy here. So today I wanna to talk to you about the Point to Google Chromebook. Now this is a really interesting Chromebook because up until a couple weeks ago, I had no idea who this company even was. Point two, I have never heard of them. They're this company out of South Korea. And this came to my attention because this Chromebook was on a few deal sites. And I just so happened to have been in the market for a Chromebook. And before this, I picked up this Acer 315. And I wasn't exactly thrilled with it. So I decided to take a look at this Chromebook and pick it up. And now I'm going to tell you what I think about it. So right now, the recording time of this video, you can pick up this Chromebook from Newegg.com for $149. But if you want to go the Amazon route like I did, it's a little bit more expensive. I paid $168, but right now I think it sells for like $175. It's a little bit more, but if you want to return it, it's a lot easier if you go through Amazon. Now there's a whole lot of Chromebooks to consider. If you go into a regular store looking at a Chromebook, chances are you're gonna find them at the low end at about a little over a hundred bucks. But then on the high end, we're getting into the several hundreds of dollars. And there's even some Chromebooks that can cost you like a thousand dollars on up. And although I don't really understand the argument for having a Chromebook that has specs that rivals mid-high to high-end laptops, I do totally understand wanting to have a small Chromebook that's going to help you do some very basic tasks like web browsing, productivity, light gaming, and just media consumption. And that's what I wanted this Chromebook for. Now, the thing about this Chromebook is the price was really good and the specs that this has is beyond anything that you will find in the store. In fact, I feel that this right now is probably one of, if not the best Chromebooks that you can buy right now for the amount of money that this costs. And I know another concern is, well, how much support is this Chromebook going to get? Well, this is a recognized company by Google and this particular Chromebook is gonna have support up until 2025. So you're gonna get automatic updates for the Chrome OS, so all your security patches and all that good stuff. You are good for the next five years. And at that point, you'll probably switch to another Chromebook, maybe even before then. So let's go over the specs of this, guys, because this is pretty incredible. So this is a 14-inch full high-definition IPS touchscreen display. That alone makes this Chromebook a much better value than almost anything that you'll find in the store. Because usually if there's a touchscreen display on a Chromebook in the store, it's not a full HD touchscreen, and it's not an IPS touchscreen, but this this has it all. And the build is also a combination of metal and plastic. Along the edges here, you'll see it plastic, but the top of this laptop is made out of aluminum. It's metal. This base right here is made out of metal. And as a result, the weight on this Chromebook is a little, old, little under four pounds. So it's heavier than what you would expect for a 14 inch Chromebook. But considering the build quality, I say that that's a pretty good trade off. Now, as far as ports go, you are getting some of the latest ports that you can find in Chromebooks. Again, especially for the price, you're going to get yourself one USB type C port that you can use to charge the Chromebook, connect displays to it, transfer data. So I love about USB-C, it's sort of like an all-in-one thing. You're also gonna get one USB 3.0 port, a full-size HDMI port, and an SD card slot, full-size SD card slot. On the inside, you also get 32 gigabytes of internal storage, but for whatever reason, if you wanted to load up an SD card, maybe with movies or something, and then put it in here, you absolutely can do that. And then you're also gonna get a combination headphone jack that also doubles as a microphone jack. And of course, there's a security lock on there as well. They rate this laptop to have a battery life of up to 12 hours, of course, that can change depending on what you're doing. If you're looking at videos, full brightness, that kind of thing, the battery life is gonna be a little bit lower. But if you're just taking it easy, you're gonna easily get through an entire day of just basic work using this Chromebook. And that is really, really great for only 168 or $175 if you go on Amazon and try to pick this up. 
some of the other hardware specs of this Chromebook is you're going to get four gigs of RAM and you're also going to get a MediaTek processor, which is a quad core processor at uh, two gigahertz. Now, initially I was a little concerned because MediaTek processors are usually reserved for like smartphones and tablets. And I thought, well, I'm used to seeing like AMD stuff and Intel chips inside of Chromebook. So maybe that means that despite all of these other fancy adornments, it wouldn't be all that fast. Let me tell you, I was wrong. Before I got this, I ended up getting an Acer 315 Chromebook from Target and that was about $250 and I wasn't too happy with it after having it for a little while. And I can tell you that even though this Chromebook came out in 2017 with that MediaTek processor, this Chromebook is actually a little bit faster than that Acer 315 in most cases, especially when it comes to startup time, when it comes to loading some web pages, and that really, really sealed the deal for me. So that Acer is probably gonna go back. So before I show you some of the real world performance that I use this Chromebook for, I'll talk a little bit about this uh, trackpad and about the keyboard. Now, I'm not really a stickler when it comes to keyboards or trackpads. If it works, great. Um, and I'm, it, it feels just fine. This particular trackpad has a little bit of a, it's almost like a little tiny bit of a texture to it. It's not the smoothest thing. It doesn't feel like glass or anything like that, but I'm fine with it. Um, I usually don't click when it comes to these trackpads, but you know, it, it feels fine. I usually just softly double tap. I do like the keyboard. Um, it doesn't have like really loud mechanical type clicky clack keys, but they're not really spongy either, you know? So you get a little bit of feedback when you're typing on it and it feels pretty good. And I personally wanted a Chromebook that was a little bit smaller. So this definitely fits the build for me. Um, and I'm just happy with it. The keyboard is not backlit. Um, that's unfortunate, but it's definitely not a deal breaker. And right now, let me show you some of the performance of this Chromebook. So in case you're wondering, this laptop does not pass the open the lid with one hand test. You are gonna to have to use two hands to lift it up. But like I said in the beginning, this top is made out of metal, it's heavy, and it feels really sturdy. So the Chromebook is completely shut down now. And when you lift up the lid, it's going to start up. So this will give you a sense of how fast the startup time is. So I'm just gonna grab it with the two hands, lift it up, and it's automatically gonna start for itself. So there we go, Chrome logo, doing all this live with no cuts. And there you go. That is how fast it boots up, uh, which is pretty fast, um, faster than the Acer that I uh, brought up earlier. And um, I might do another video that shows a little bit of comparison between this one and that one. But until then, let me log in and show you some more stuff. So now everything is booted up and this screen is a very nice full definition HD screen. Now, is it the nicest screen in the world? I don't know. I haven't seen every screen on every Chromebook to be able to tell you that, but I can say that to me, it looks very nice. Uh, so right now I have it on max brightness, which is good for if you're looking at it indoors, um, you might even have to turn the brightness down a little bit. You know, I'm the kind of person who doesn't need max brightness, you know, but it's plenty bright to me. I think it looks good. All right, so let's just take a look at some speed tests. Let's open up Google Chrome, you can see how fast, or not Google Chrome, but the Play Store and see how fast that that loads up. And you see, and that was plenty fast. Using the touchscreen interface, this is how the touchscreen is gonna interact. I went over here at first, but there's nothing over there. So, you know, don't worry about that. But I found the touchscreen experience to be, you know, pretty good, you know, not bad at all. A touchscreen on a Chromebook is kind of like, um, it's nice to have, but it's not totally necessary. These days, Chromebooks do have access to the Google Play Store, so you can download Android apps on it if you want. But you might find yourself not using the touchscreen as much, but it's one of those things where you rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. But the touchscreen experience to me has been pretty good. Let me show you some of these uh, apps that I've gotten from, the, uh, from Google Play. All right, so let's just look at uh, Disney Plus. Why not? So this is a native Android app. Of course, you can just go to the Disney Plus website and sign in there if you wanna look at stuff there. But this is the kind of app that you could use your mouse controls for, but you can also use the touchscreen control. And you can see that that's a pretty 
reasonably smooth scroll. There's uh, still some loading to be done, but you know, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Definitely pretty good. It's more than serviceable. So let's click on something for Pixar. You know, it shows you all your stuff there. You're scrolling across and you know, and it's all good. It's all good. And then you can just close it out with your finger all the way on the top right, or, you know, you just close it out yourself normally like that. Let's take a look at some web browsing here. So I just went to the Apple website because it has a lot of pictures. It can have a lot going on at times just so you can get a sense of the smoothness of smoothness of the touchscreen and whatnot. Now, it's interesting because unlike the Disney Plus app, you can see like this is a much smoother scrolling experience. It's almost as if um, there's a little bit of a ghosting and not necessarily a lag, but there's just something about the Disney Plus app when you use it on here that makes it smooth, but not as smooth as it could be. But when it comes to surfing on the web, it's super smooth. And I just loaded up the page and look at like that, it's like no lag at all. So it could be just one of those things, optimization for certain apps can work better on some chips than others, but it's definitely, definitely passable. So yeah, this looks good. You have all the same functions as you would a normal touchscreen. This is a 10 point, um, touch screen so you can still do your zooming in like that and just see what's going on with Marissa Robertson and her super fancy metal Apple credit card and all that other good stuff so web experience here is pretty good and you also may be a little bit curious about how's gaming on these gaming is not really something that I would use a Chromebook for though you can if you wanted to the hinge goes back 180 degrees it doesn't go all the way back it's not convertible so you can't make it go around the back but you know that is something that's kind of neat if you want to do it but if you're just curious how the gaming experience is I have one game that I'm going to show you so some of you who look at my channel may know that I am a wrestling fan and I like WWE so I went ahead and I downloaded this free-to-play game WWE Mayhem just to get a sense of how the gaming experience is and of course you're going to be using the touchscreen. Now when it comes to games, some of the time you can change the different types of uh, graphic fidelity that the games offer. So you see on here by default the battery saver is on, the graphics are on low, and the resolution is on 70. I'm going to go ahead and turn the battery saver off. I'm going to put it at high graphics and I'm going to leave the resolution at 70 just to see what kind of performance that we're going to get out of this. Now I have played this before using uh, the default low settings and everything is smooth, but let's see how it is once we bump it up a little bit. All right, so we're going to do Kane versus Xavier Woods. Now you got to bear with me because it's kind of awkward trying to play on a laptop's touchscreen. And that's one of the other things where, you know, I don't really do gaming on a Chromebook, but just so you get a sense of how things are. You know, and I can I kind of forgot how to play here. Do my big boot. So yeah, as you can see, it's moving, it's moving pretty smooth with the um, graphic fidelity high and the uh, resolution at 70. So if you are a gamer and you're just wondering, you know, like what the gaming experience is going to be like, you know, this can give you a sense. So of course, if you're going to play a game that has a less graphical fidelity and whatnot, it's going to be even smoother than this. So here's a sample of a 1080p video of mine that I shot. I uploaded this in 4K, but this is the 1080p HD version of it. And as you can see, it is playing back very smooth. Let's just skip ahead to something that hasn't already been preloaded. So you can see how long that goes. And yeah, everything is nice and smooth. Now, of course, this is a 1080p display, probably not worth it to try to look at it at any higher quality, but let's just do it anyway. Now, this is 1440p. And we're just going to get a sense of this, if there's going to be any stutters or any stammering or anything like that. And so far at 1440p is playing back just fine. But when we try to step it up to 4K, which is kind of ridiculous, trying to look at 4K on a 1080p display, it plays back smoothly for the most part, but then you get 
those little stutters every now and there, every now and then, which is totally understandable. So you're good looking at 1080p footage. Don't try to look at 4K stuff. It's going to hold up even though it's already been preloaded. It's just a little bit too much for it to handle. But uh, 1080p, you're good. 1440p, you're also good. So that was the point to Google Chromebook. You know, I think for the money that you're paying for this, you are getting a really good Chromebook. It's worth more than what they're charging for. Uh, full 1080p IPS touchscreen display. Uh, it's plenty fast. I can look at 1080p YouTube videos without stuttering, 1440p YouTube videos without it stuttering, and just good performance overall. This is definitely a winner. And it's funny because this Chromebook at this point, it's two years old and it's still performing like a champ. So I really do recommend if you are in the market for a Chromebook and you don't have a huge budget, but you don't want to get something that you're going to fall out of love with really quickly because you can't stand the screen or it feels pretty cheap or whatever the case may be. This company that you have never heard of is the solution to your questions and to your prayers. This is the Chromebook that you are going to want to get. It is cheap, it is good, and I wholeheartedly recommend it. So thank you all so much for watching this. Until next time, I'm Jeremy. I'll talk to you later.